Huh? It's the last episode. Or episode she's made. Peter Sam is chuffing in the old railway that he, Sir Handel and Duke now live in. Some years ago, they arrived on Tasman Sogor and were working in it for many years till it closed down. It was reopened again and they would visit it as a weekend place. There was a forest that surrounded the railway. He liked them here. He could hear the wonderful sounds of the animals, part of wildlife. But sometimes the forests would, would, would be filled with sharp sounds, like some dingoes eating dead animals that never make it. Peter Sam thought them horrifying, like humans lying dead on the ground. One night, Peter Sam was doing the work of delivering the coal from a mine. When he heard a gunshot, it shattered the silence of the forest. What was that, driver? Hmm. By the sound of that bang, it's some hunters that have done it, said the driver. Some people say if hunters with licenses are doing the killing, they have to kill an animal. That is a threat. And if other hunters don't, they would try to get away with it. When they aren't educated enough to know about when hunters have rights to kill. Peter Sam went on with a sor sorrow face. He was thinking what happened when in heaven, Henry's forest, he was thinking what happened in Henry's forest. A gunshot was sounded. The next morning there was talk about the gunshot. The thin controller was telling them, Peter Sam's driver has informed the police about the gunshot that happened on his coal. Delivery. So, if one of you ever see them, you'll have to stop them with wishing steam at them, like Henry did. We know that, sir. Peter Sam told us, said the nurse. But what is a big sorrow for Peter Sam and Duke? We want to avoid us not having our railway when we first arrived here on Tasman Sodor. The first time is to be a criminal zone. That's right, sir, said Duke. Where to keep it reopened? not closed. I see what you mean, said the thin controller. 
a bunch of sorrow you don't want to have. Peter so meant to do his work on the branch line. He was to take the goods from the woods, but whenever he was in them, his fear about the hunters would haunt him. Come on, old boy. Buck up, said the driver. Don't want to run late. Sorry, sir. It's the memory of the gunshot that haunts me, you know. He went to bed at the end of the day in his weekend railway. The next night, he went to take the coal to Tanner. I can't wait to tell me Georgia Wood. On our island, he would chuff to himself as he steamed away. When he went through where he was yesterday, last night, he heard the same gunshot again, followed by a shout. Peter Sam saw to his shock a wild pig running. Driver, stop it, animal! The noise of his brakes frightened the pig as it ran off in thicker bushes. Then he saw two men lurking up. You've made us lose our target. One of them said. Of course we did. You have no right of law breaking killing an animal, snapped the driver. I don't see any law paper that can stop me. Stand aside, said another. Peter Sam wished angrily at the two criminals. They got taken by surprise and wet. Sir Handel, who, who was also helping with the coal work, saw what was happening, and he too wished steam at them. Get out of our way! they cried, but they kept getting them wet. At last they gave up. The course took them to the brake van, and with the gun of no bullets, which the driver took out, kept it with him. Morning came and the thin controller heard about what had happened last night. Well done, you two, for saving your first term, he said. I had a word with the, man the new manager who runs it, and he said he can arrange a sign to be put in it so the hunters weren't invaded. Thank you, sir. Henry so we'll be proud of this. The first railway was now safe and the sign being put here said Peter Sam and Sir Handel's Forest. No hunters allowed. And the animals were thriving again. The engines were pleased to help 
the wildlife become alive again. The woods never had any gunshots for years. Not once. <laughs> of my service. That is all for today.